ever okay. wonder what okay. it's like to do a podcast? <laughs> well, now um, you know. Oh, wow. For God, you, you, you took my job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's delightful. I'm going to real quick go fair. into our uh, intro and then we can get yes. into this properly and I'll, I'll do the introductions and everything and say, yeah, hi, everyone. Because I do, actually, it doesn't matter. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to all the films we judged before. I'm Katie. That's Lily Kate. And with us today is the lovely Jason. Hello, I'm Hello. Jason Spizak, the voice of lots of th stuff all yeah. over the interwebs and TVs and movies and games. Just all the best stuff. Yeah. Let's be fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I tend to try to, to to do the best work I can, and I'm not lying when I say that's anything that they will give me because I'm an actor <laughs> and uh, I work for food. So yeah, that's fair. I, I, that's, I, I do um I do work so. in in TV and films like runner stuff, yeah. and it's kind of like I'll do anything, please. <laughs> so I am. <laughs> How did you decide to do the role of Silco? Uh, answer: I just said yes. Like there's. You know, I begged. Uh, <laughs> and interestingly enough, Arcane had such a long road to becoming a series. Mm. I think it was, I was on the project for six to seven years. Holy uh, cow. JB Blanc was on for eight. Oh. And, you know, it was first, it was, you know, tests, and then it was a pilot, and then it was, you know, you know, series. It was a lot of, I would, wouldn't say pre-production. It was just a lot of straight up production mm. because, it takes them forever to animate something mm. of this quality too. The, uh, the animators at Fortiche, who are brilliant geniuses, you know, they, I think they do, as JB told me, a few seconds a day, something like of, you know, animation. Yeah. yeah. And when you think about how long all the episodes of Arcane add up to be in seconds, you're like, yes, that makes sense. Yeah. So are you saying that we have to wait seven years for season two? <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, they've kind of painted themselves into a corner. Uh, Christian and Alex, the creators, uh, they have announced that there'll be a season two already. Yeah. And they've said when it will be ish. They've given a time frame, I think. And so we're not going to be waiting seven years again. I think they said so in multiple interviews that, it, that oh, okay. the pressure that's... is on for them. So. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's. I mean. I mean. Um, uh, yeah. I mean. I'd wait. <laughs> like, I, I maybe not seven well. years. No. <laughs> it's, 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 it's but amazing. like, but, whatever they want to do to make sure that it's as uh, you know as glorious to look at as the first season was, which was just every frame a, a literal painting. It um, is. Yeah, they had to learn how to produce animated shows because for uh, Riot up until that point had only used Fortiche to produce music videos, mm. and mm -hmm. they had only you know build the video games so they they didn't know they didn't have the in-house experience or practice making yeah. an animated series but now they do so they're very good at optimizing mm. they're a, a group of incredibly smart people they're in, very talented and they know how to pull talent in that gets their goals accomplished uh basically the best in the world to accomplish those goals so now that they've done it i think that you know i could envision and easily them cutting it down in half, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A, I mean, it, it, it must be much easier to do it the second time around. Like, you know, yeah. you already have everything well, you need. Um, yeah, technically. I think the story, they have a lot to live up to. Yeah, that's... And so, right, <laughs> they're probably sweating quite profusely, you yep. know. It's, you know, it's I, um, it, 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 we, we talked about this with Katie. It's easily one of the most beautifully uh, animated series out there like it's yeah. it's just gorgeous to look at the voice work is unreal it's like it's <laughs> it's so good and uh i think i think they both agreed that we were very sad that silco died i was so sad honestly it was like he was so in like there was so it's yeah, so entertaining to kind of watch him you know do Thank everything you. that he does throughout the, throughout the um throughout the series so yeah. when he did die in that last episode i was like oh man <laughs> It's kind of happened to see more of it. I never would have given you to them. Oh, Not for anything. Yeah, it, it, it gets it gets rough quick. Oh. But but uh, I've been a martyr a few times in a TV series like Young Justice, and mm -hmm. like it, it's a privilege as an actor to play the character that impacts the audience the most if they're gone. Like, that's like, very true you know that like if you if you looked at another character in the cast and you just pick someone and they happen to die it, 
there's something about the way Arcane's constructed that Silco has to die for Jinx to become mm. who they are. Like Jinx has to be more than Silco's daughter, you know. And in order for that to be achieved, Silco has to uh, bow out, has to give way so that Jinx can complete their journey to becoming the person that they are. And you know that's every father's journey, right? You don't you don't get to be there to watch your child hopefully go all the distance, uh, you know, being with them every second. You have to let them go. And it is, it's, <laughs> it's so well written from that aspect, but you, yes. it's bittersweet because you know Zoko had to die. You almost get that feeling like, yeah, that's how it has to be. You know, oh, even yeah. though we hate it, there's, there's, it's, yeah, it's, it, there's always the difference between um, this made me incredibly emotional, and uh, I'm, I'm saying I hate it from a place of like reactionary, yeah. but truly from a, a technical, like, um, you know, story written standpoint, it yeah. is like this. Uh, I understand it makes sense. I'm not mad at it. <laughs> like, it's not, yeah. it's not bad storytelling. It yeah. is. The no, opposite. I'm mad as hell, but it's great I, storytelling. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say I'm mad as hell. I was like, I, I, can't you I didn't me? get to play Silco anymore, <laughs> so I'm very angry. No, I, I, it's it's uh, yeah, it's the, but, the sweetest sorrow. Yeah, yeah. But you, you are an doing actor, such, yeah, because it's like you know you spend this time building this character and you work really really hard on this and then you're like, <laughs> and then it just fades away. Don't go. Yeah. Just don't go. <laughs> Stay, sir. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, but you are doing such a great job on TikTok, uh, you know, reacting to to the fans, uh, yeah. basically recreating scenes, doing amazing cosplays. Like, yeah. Jesus. I'm, I've got one built that I I, I saw. should be able. To, well, I didn't build it. Um, Corey did, and it should be done. Corey got ill with COVID. And I, so there's the timeline for the cosplay that just got whacked. And I said, look, mm. whenever you finish this thing, it's a costume. <laughs> you, and this isn't even for like a production. I'm just going to wear this, you know, to comic cons and yep. you know, do shoots and stuff. So just whenever you take your time and be healthy. So, so cool. the timeline got pushed back. But yeah, sometime in May, I think we'll, we'll uh, end up with that. And, oh. and because they have access to um, really detailed uh, artwork. Mm -hmm. that shows what Silco looks like. And I'll just leave it at that. This should be the most accurate Silco cosplay that's ever been seen. Wow. Oh, so, the, the tease. Uh, the Lily's going to have to send that to me because I'm not on TikTok. So. <laughs> <laughs> I will. <laughs> yeah. I will. I promise. Believe uh, me, it'll, it'll, it'll end up all over Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. Mm. Very, very I did some possibly. TikTok videos as Silco and they just... Uh, Oh, they People blew up. Those up pretty hard. Yep. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, um, I'm going to put in one of the fan questions oh, that we have. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, thank you to everybody. You know, by the way, hello yeah. to all you wonderful fans who are listening. And thank you for taking the time out of your day and joining us. It really means a lot uh, to me as an actor. Anytime you create some work, you just never know the effect it's going to have on people. And I'm entirely, unbelievably grateful that all of you were so touched by the work that you want to spend your time to listen and be a part of the fandom. So just thank you. And we thank you for putting views on our video and engaging with us. <laughs> <laughs> we thank you for the new followers that will shortly arrive as soon as we post this. <laughs> exactly. That's the one. I know In your selfish desires. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Um, but still, it's nice that you are here. Uh, <laughs> we are very grateful. <laughs> right. Uh, so this one is from Andy Colwell, and Hello, the question Andy. is, has Arkane's excellent writing changed the way you choose which roles to play? The answer is still no, and I wish, well, yes and no. Uh, I don't, I haven't had that many Ar Arcane-related offers. There have been a few, and usually in the business, you still have to audition. You still have to read for producers. They still want to see how you... Uh, sound and work on the characters, so I've had some incredible opportunities. Um, but as an actor, I, I try not to choose not to do work. Mm. If I, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I'm doing a job and that prevents me from doing another job. It's yeah. pretty rare in voiceover. I am working on some on-camera stuff. There's a Western called uh, 
a vast lonesome that I'm doing and an independent film uh, called Match. Uh, but it, it's, if you have the choice, you work all the time because there are no bad roles. There really are no bad productions. I mean, I'm, I'm in the Screen Actors Guild, so they have to pay union rate. There's, they, there's not like, you know, they can't, can't get me on the cheap, uh, you know, but if, I just love to work. I love to create characters. I've got, you know, a whole long list of IMDb that says that sometimes I just take a role because it's there and some aren't the best. <laughs> but, you know, I love to create characters and tell stories. Mm -hmm. So the answer really is it hasn't changed my mm. point of view on accepting roles. The answer is, well, I just don't have that, that point of view about working. Yeah, I love working. And voiceover is easy that way because I could be on three shows at once. I could, you know, it only takes me so much time to do a voiceover, really not that long at all in, in actual time of day. Mm. Uh, so, I, you know, I'm never so full with work that I, I have to say, oh, I'm just I'm too full. You know, yeah. I think there was a brief time that I was just so busy with things during Arcane Publicity that things had to get pushed out. Mm. But, you know. That's all. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Plus, yeah. you get to wear comfy clothes whilst you're doing it. <laughs> yeah. I am. Ha ha. Awfully cold without pants. Mm. Yes. It's, uh, it, it, it. I have a joke on TikTok where I did that. I, I sent up this guy's uh, Silco cosplay uh, because yeah. he was basically standing in the lake and you couldn't see him from waist down. And I just joked that he wasn't wearing any pants because you can't see them. Well, but that's good. Yes. I can wear, you know, relaxed clothes. I don't have to get up and be in. 3 a.m. in the makeup trailer mm. like you do when you're, you know, on a movie set. It's really the best gig. Uh, mm. It is. <laughs> I'm going to slide in with one of my own questions that I've got written yes. down here. Because um, I was doing a little bit of, um, I was looking at your IMDb <laughs> and I, I yeah. was saying that you, you've been, you've been, you've been doing this voiceover thing for a, quite a while. Um, quite a while. Quite a while. Yes, yeah. A bit, yeah. I'll, you know, cut my teeth a bit early. <laughs> Yeah. I was just wondering how you think, um, do, you, do you feel like the industry has, has changed a lot since you began uh, compared to a now? A lot, do? actually. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, first of all, when, we were, when I was giving out my audition tape trying to get, you know, get an agent when I first made it to L.A., uh, I, I first made a cassette. <coughs> I'm old. Wow. S second, we were passing around CDs. And so it, it wasn't until about halfway through my career that we started sending around MP3s of ourselves uh, you know, and we didn't have home studios until, mm. you know, the last maybe six, seven years or so home studios were a thing. I had a home studio much earlier because I uh, commuted a lot and I didn't want to live in LA all the time. And it, the business has also changed from a casting perspective. There's a lot more stunt casting that goes on. And that just basically means they get someone whose voice you know from TV or movies or they're a personality. Right. Um, to be the voice of people in animated features and series. And that, that wasn't the case for the vast majority of my career. Um, that's not done a ton in video games. It's not done quite as much, but it yeah. certainly is on the rise in video games also, because video games make more than TV and movies combined now. Uh, mm. And that is, it's, I like not, being as famous as somebody who's on Game of Thrones, like in my life, mm. that I can go to restaurants or do whatever. But the drawback is that I'm, I, I'm not the first choice for Silco. I mean, I really, to be honest, wasn't. And I know that they were looking for a vocal quality they just could not find. And so I was able to bring it. There are a lot of talented voice actors who are really, that's their bread and butter, who are in Arcane. But there's also TV and movie stars. Mm. Uh, it's an interesting mix. So pretty much these days leads are split between the two you get some leads in animated series that are you know you get your personalities your movie stars your tv actors and you get some veteran voice actors these days it's split yeah um and, and that's i mean it is what it is every business evolves every set of producers is looking to get their show uh seen yeah and i don't fault them for that I think it's, you know, that's what I would do if I was running the business, <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, yeah it's true. Is that, but, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. No, you go ahead. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, all I want to say that you were the best choice for Circle. Like, you know, 
Thank you. Uh, it's, Alex it's, said the same thing. He said he once he heard my voice, it was it. So yeah. there you go. It's I, you know, but, but that's just luck. <laughs> The whole I mean, thing is, isn't it's it? Not, it's, it's talent and it's, hard work. Yeah, it's it's yes. a bit of both. There, though, but, it's at the same time. But it is. Yeah, it's a bit of both. Yeah. Bit of both. Best yeah. of both worlds. Um, go ahead, Katie. You had a question, I, I think. um have forgotten what I was going to say, so I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to bow out and let you ask some and questions. So now we, we just I turn think. to Silco for a monologue. You know, <laughs> you can't. You can't. You could eat you up from the inside out. Can either break you or forge you into something greater. You're strong now, just like you were always meant to be. Jinx is perfect. Ah, it's the best, it's the best it's time to be here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just so good. <laughs> Don't um, worry. Whenever you're flustered, I just I'll handle it. Yeah, okay, no appreciate problem. it. Great. Uh, you can come and work for us. <laughs> we, sure. we are hiring. <laughs> Um, okay, my question is, um, what inspired you to become an actor? Well, my fourth grade teacher, uh, Mr. Bloom, I went to see him in a production of Godspell, and I had never really thought of, I mean, I did cartoon voices in front of the TV, mm -hmm. and I watched Warner Brothers cartoons growing up, and I always had a gift for making voices, you know, uh, like I was, you know, young. And so my voice sounded like their voices on helium, you know, <laughs> snaggle puss even. And, uh, but it was like snaggle puss even. <laughs> and, uh, I, so I had the, the, the gift, but never really thought about it because unless you see someone that you want to emulate, it's difficult. Uh, and back when I was growing up, you know, we didn't have Twitter and Instagram and TikTok to see the people we enjoy watching as performers. Mm. intimately you know like if you if you, you you can watch a TikTok or watch a, an instagram video of someone who you have seen on screen and it's almost like all of a sudden they're a real performer someone you look up to and the person in the movie all at the same time so anyway it was the first time that i saw an actor a person who you know i was in his classroom every day also go up on stage and do this thing that's in you know community theater and i would say that's when it kind of struck me like okay, that was really cool. He was already a cool teacher, but that was really cool. <laughs> uh, and it wasn't until college when I, um, well, high school, I started doing theater sports and, you know, theater in high school and things like that. But I still wasn't 100% sure that was the way that I was going to take my college. I always thought it would be nice to be a performer, but mm -hmm. you don't even, I don't even know how to take this road. You know, if you yeah. haven't seen a family member take the road, you have no idea. No one's told you what to do me a lot of anxiety or just kind of don't know what to do. Uh, and then I remember watching Animaniacs, uh, Rob Paulson and Jess Harnell. And, uh, I was thinking, okay, I think I could do that for a career. I think, you know, I'm pretty good. I did some stand-up comedy shows, some pilots, you know, and stuff. And I thought, okay, well, because I, I was doing stand-up at the time. I thought, okay, that could, I, could, I could probably do this. So right after in college I had a choice to take like architecture classes or theater classes and I just decided to go full on into the theater and got my degree as a bachelor of fine arts in theater and then went out to LA so you know life is always the road less traveled mm. like Robert mm. Frost says right and yeah <laughs> I, I just was like I'm just drawn to do this I always thought I'd be miserable doing anything else so Yep, I know that yeah. feeling. <laughs> I how I wandered into the woods and I was like, oh my God, I'm here without shoes. I didn't pack a lunch. I'm so screwed, you know? And so I'm huddling down, crapping in the corner and some twigs. And I'm like eating beetles and, you know, 26 years later, I'm Zilko. So, <laughs> there you go. You know, everyone's there journey, you really. Yeah. It's just, if you just follow so those common. simple steps. <laughs> Yeah, just, just, just follow these simple steps. Eat beetle shit in the bushes, profit. It's, it's just everything. It's all in one, you know. Your age. Story of my life. Yeah. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, you know, that, that gives me hope. Uh, as people know me as the Shombi. Yeah, that you don't need toilet paper. Yeah. Is that what it gives yeah. you hope? Yeah. No. So in the apocalypse, you can just go into the woods and relieve yourself. I mean, I, I'm oh, glad, you know. Yeah. You know, glad to give you hope. You know, it's, I, it, it's happy. Yeah. But also. Hungry in the woods, but it's fine. Hmm. Yeah. 
The leaves will be great. <laughs> it's, yeah. I suggest use large leaves. Mm. You'll be just fine. Yeah. That's fair. That's a fair point. That's a fair point. Uh, but it, it also gives me hope because uh, people know me as the Sean Bean of extras. So that's my career oh. so far in acting. <laughs> really? <laughs> Dying in everything I, uh, in the I background. I gave her like, this <laughs> moniker not very long after we started working because she was like, I, I do a lot of extra work, but I die in everything. So I went, oh, you saw the Sean Bean of extras then. <laughs> that's great. What you what you really need to do is put together a montage of all your deaths and put it up on TikTok. Yeah, you know that's yeah. that's the plan. I want to see it. <laughs> the thing yeah. is that uh, oftentimes I can't even find myself, so I'm not like you know the. the... You know, but aren't we all trying to find ourselves? Let's be honest. <laughs> so true. You know, it's it's that's... our life's journey. That's very yeah. true. <laughs> that's very true. Uh, but uh, yeah, that so that gives me hope that one day I will be you know I don't know. Uh, Wonder Woman or something, or Captain Marvel right. in the next remake of the Marvel <laughs> Universe. <laughs> that just means they're going to die, though. So we have to be very careful about yes, that. That's yeah. true. Huh. That's true. That's true. Oh, well. Don't I'm let them good play at you. Dying. Don't let Lily play you. No, don't. <laughs> oh, you're going to die. No. Well, you can play Silco then, because, well, to oh. be honest. You know, that's true. I don't think in the live I action the version. same. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Or they just they just grab me for the dying scene, right. just okay. that scene. Right. Somebody just totally that scene. <laughs> Lily's Lily's my stand-in for the live action Arcane. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that was my plan all along. Yes. <laughs> Don't cry. Um, oh, Lily, it's your turn. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but um, anyway, I I have a very good joke for oh, you. God. That's my thing, and Katie loves it. A joke. She yes. tells. Right. She tells. Yeah. We're just gonna let it happen. <laughs> Yes, please. Okay. I like how Katie sees the train coming and it's just like, eh, I'm just going to push Jason on the track. It's cool. Okay. Uh, uh, knock, knock. Who's there? It's Hawaii. Hawaii who? I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> You've told this one before. I know, wow. but I had to get it. The answer is, I'm dead. How are you? Oh. Yeah. I'm, I'm also dead. <laughs> I'm fine. Oh God, I'm the only person I'm alive in this interview. Fuck. Yes. <laughs> Katie's the only one alive. Life crisis. Don't put yeah. this on me. <laughs> it's now your job to carry this interview, Katie. People, oh, people constantly ask me to do bad dad jokes, like on my it's live so streams good. and everywhere. <laughs> like, there's something about those kind of jokes that people just want to watch it happen. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. Is the, I love a dad joke. Lily finds the ones that are like <laughs> the most like the really simple, that... like the ones you've kind of heard a million times before, and she finds them sure. hilarious. <laughs> like unironically, which is very sweet to watch, but it does leave me going. <laughs> that that means that Katie doesn't appreciate my jokes, which makes she really no. sad. This is this is well documented at this point. <laughs> It is. I, I, I think the linguistic flair of that is uh, part of why Katie might appreciate it so much. Because so, <laughs> yeah. you're a multilingual. So it's true. She's certain... way more talented than me in that respect. Stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut up. There's a certain, certain appeal to that. How yeah. are you? I get it. It's so good. Uh, Katie. Yeah, All right. Um, um, question. All right. Because we are a uh, primarily a film and TV podcast, I you would are. like to know have you seen anything good lately? Arcane. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fair. Uh, That's fair. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, I recently watched Dark, and uh, oh, I didn't like the last ages. season of it. Mm. I liked, but I watched it in the original German mm. with English subtitles because you really as have one to. should. As a as a voice actor who's done dubbing, I uh, can't. I can't watch most dubs. Can't do mm. it. Um, but. I love the cinematography. I love the storytelling, but the first two seasons are really great. I think that they rushed a lot. You know, anytime you probably know it's your last season and they're trying to wrap things up, there yeah. tends to be pressure on writers. And what comes out the other end of that sausage factory is a lot of times not what the audience wants. <clears throat> Game of Thrones, and not, <laughs> what, what, <laughs> not you know what what it, it doesn't feel like the rest of the show. Yeah, you know, and that you know, but it's good. Uh, you know, I watched Glitch. I thought that was pretty good. Patty Brammel, Patrick Brammel, uh, mm -hmm. uh, who's also uh, on No Activity. The, uh, it's a comedy show, No Activity. He's very talented. I got to work with him on that show once. And it's 
I liked it. I liked it. Glitch. I kind of like the, not horror, but sort of ed- bordering on that. Yeah. Or um, sci-fi thriller-ish puzzle type stuff. Mm. I mean, that's what Intersect is, the movie I produced and starred in. Uh, so, yeah. It's nice. out there. You can go watch it now. Intersect. Oh, I will have to go and find it. I, yeah. I, it's, I mean, the director reminds my buddy Gus, and it's very, it's a puzzle movie. So it does. I do love lose. puzzles. <laughs> yes, it does tend to lose people sometimes, <laughs> but uh, it's not like anything else you've right, probably sorry. seen. Oh, you, you, okay. Yeah. We have, uh, uh, I have to put it on the watch list. Wait. <laughs> I have so many things I have to catch up on. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it's, it's happening. I'm slowly getting yeah. there. It's the best thing to do when you're drawing. You're like, you know, I'm just sitting here oh, drawing. Yeah. The TV is here, and I'm like, yeah. Put what? stuff on there. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It works. And that's how yeah. I watched I watch Rebirth. RuPaul's Drag Race all the time in the back. Yes! Oh my God, I love you. <laughs> I love it. It's such a brilliantly hilarious I love you both. show. And just, yeah. I, I like anything that affirms people's authentic selves. You know, if you, you can have the courage to kind of, you know, be who you are despite what everyone might think or say. I like that message. I do. Yeah. And I also find it's, it's theater. You know, which I love. It is. Because it's run from the theater. So I've it's known nice. a few drag queens. And, oh. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's fun. Who, who, was, yeah. who, was your, who was your favorite queen? Uh, Katya. I, I went on holiday recently with my, my two best friends. Um, we went to a little a house in, in Wales. And we have spent a lot of the week, um, you know, when we weren't off doing little walks around Snowdonia. Um, mm. uh, they were watching a lot of um, Trixie and Katia videos on YouTube yeah. just in the background. They're and I was so like, this funny. is very entertaining. <laughs> Oh, it's so great. It's, it's, it's gloriously great. edited with the kind of sense of humor that I love. Yeah. Which just is constantly slapping you and turning direction. And I, just, <laughs> I just love it so much. The show is hilarious. It, it's so good. I'm, I'm, I have this uh, I, dream to see Bianca Del Rio, who's, who's my yeah. favorite, uh, because I think at the moment, I don't know, it's, it's, uh, we, we don't talk about Jamie. That's the place. Everyone's name, talking or... about Damien. Everyone's talking oh, about the opposite. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah there you go. That, the opposite. <laughs> it's that no one talks about this play, but it's not called that. It's called yeah. Yeah, that, that one. I, I really want to see that one because I, I I think that's the one. They did an adaptation of that recently. I don't know if it's come out yet. I swear I it was. It, no, I'm gonna look this up now because it's gonna bug look, me. Look, look it up. Look it up. Uh, in the meantime, you, you there's another going. fan question. Uh, fan questions. Then, yes. Uh, this one is from John. Uh, Hello, John. You have a rich history in portraying characters from the DC and Marvel universes. Are there mm. any comic book characters that you would jump at the chance to portray in live action? And who and why? He, live he, action? He, wow. He, I mean, he also uh, he, followed up that up with, um, he said that he loved doing Hush as the Joker. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, of course I'd love to play the Joker live action. There's on my IMDb. Oh, yes. I think there are still some photos there of when I was doing a photo test for another on camera and the DP had the lighting just right and then he sent me a Photoshop of he painted it with the Joker oh, makeup and sent it to me and it's that's it's nice. quite something. Yeah, I think I'd make a great Joker. The Joker's been played a lot recently. Mm, there has so, been a like, lot. Me I'm I would love to do something fresh and different. Um, you know, a comic book character that I would like to play in person. Um, oh, that's a really tough one. I might like to take a stab at the Riddler <gasps> because I'm not sure he's been done uh, to my personal satisfaction yet. Did you, <laughs> did you see the Batman, so, the, the new Batman movie then? Oh, God, I haven't. So if there's a Riddler in it, then I just blew it. Because I, I, <laughs> there is, I haven't had a there is a Riddler. Like, you got to go see it, bro. So I probably just talked out a turn. I mean, no, I no, I, would, I was curious because um, I think because I personally, um, I mean, I played the, the Arkham games. They were the, my, my main main yeah. sort of way into um, Batman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as much as the Riddler should be somebody that I like, because I love sort of cat and mouse sort of stories, anything with For like sure. puzzles and all that stuff. Right. I find the Riddler in those games to be the most right. annoying thing in the world. Can, can, can you imagine if the Riddler was played like Silco though? Mm, and I don't see. mean like a voice match or anything. I mean that this guy is just the smartest guy in the room. Yeah. And not from a psycho joker standpoint where mm. you know you don't know what's coming next and the joker gets you because you couldn't see it yeah, yeah. that the riddler literally plans ahead and can outthink batman in the comics sometimes yeah and that's the reason that's why he's the riddler yeah. if you play it like that to me 
that's where you get some really interesting dynamics between him and Batman rather than him looking like a ham-handed grandstanding idiot who's always way too into his own shit. This is to basically. actually be effective because because he has to seem like a threat. He yeah. has to seem like that, you know. And I, I just I don't know. I haven't felt that or seen that or heard I that would be yet. Interested but to see what you think of, of Paul the, Dano's. Um, that's the case with the new one. Yeah, so well, it's it's. Just, it's an interesting and didn't watch it yet yeah it's interesting i mean i i really like what they did with him but i i don't know if it actually scratched yeah. that itch that you're describing yet yeah um because that that is the sort of character that i would really like to see as, as a riddler so yeah 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 and that's i i tend to try and look at characters that way and that may be why i there are some characters i don't end up playing because when i get the script in front of me mm especially if it's something serious, you know, we're not doing a kid's cartoon, you yeah. know, where the Riddler's making jokes. Like, I'm going to get you, Batman. Like, it's just, and you, you, I vi look at those the way that I would want to watch them. Mm. So as an actor, I'm going to send in an audition that mm. isn't what I think the producer wants. Yeah. I, I, am I going to waste my time get second guessing that or trying to get that? I, I, not the producer. I don't live in the producer's brain. So I'm going to try to, make the character that I want to see. Mm. And it a lot of times doesn't jive with what they think the world wants to see or whatever. And that's okay. I, I didn't yeah. get that role. I probably would have felt uncomfortable playing it in the direction they wanted to take it then. Yeah. Because I, I mean, again, when I'm in the booth, if they ask me for something, I just do it. I just, mm. I'm happy to do it. And I love to experiment and play, but I will try to send in auditions with the feeling of the character in a way that I just think it would be fun to watch and to experience, you know, and, and sometimes that's the role of the dice that you take as an actor. You have to make a choice or two or three, and I'll send in two or three reads sometimes, you know, and it just isn't what, what you're thinking. And then I'll watch it and I'll go, hmm, yeah, that, I wouldn't have done it that way and probably good. <laughs> I, it's not that I just didn't, you didn't enjoy seeing it or whatever, yeah. you know, and, uh, but that's part of being an artist, mm. right? Like, you know, Lily, you know this, like your, your art style is who you are. It's yeah. an element, it's pieces of yourself, you know, pulled out as threads, as sinews and put out into the world in whatever medium you choose. And that's all I have to play. I have the sinews of my heart. I have, you know, my, my experiences. I have, those are the strings of the instruments that I get to play with. So it's, it's going to be you know, piece of me ultimately. Yeah. I think that's, that's the smartest way to go about that sort yeah. of thing <laughs> as well. Yeah. Because yeah. you can't be everything for everybody else. You can only be, you know, you. I can sound like them. But you I can can't. sound like them. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's very true. That's right. So, so I'm, I'm basically, I'm putting out in the world uh, the perfectionist idiot. <laughs> it's like, it needs to be perfect. <laughs> like, that's why a drawing takes Art. me like, we could oh, put it this way, detail oriented and very uh, <laughs> and yes, you know, very it, it, it's funny. Do you, you easily get overloaded in this culture that we have created? Do, do you find yourself easily overloaded? And this oh, is yeah. interesting because I have met many people who are perfectionist and well, I just want to say pay attention to the details mm -hmm. and they have this the way that their brain is constructed. That would have been incredibly advantageous had our culture not taken this turn to complete fucking overload. Mm. That their f the features of the way their brain works wouldn't have led them down into an anxiety depression spiral because it's overloaded. It would have they would have been the queen. They would have been the the the, the scientist. They would have been the I don't know the the gifted wise person that we go to for advice because they can see the details. They can see the whole picture um and i find that we're doing uh, that element of society kind of a disservice by how the look at me i'm charismatic check me out i can make money on tiktok <laughs> like that's nice okay it but is. think of all the humans we're missing out on how they can contribute to society and move us really truly forward in a way and i i, I had the same argument i have two daughters my same argument was you know, any culture that holds back one gender over another 
mm. is missing out on all of the great stuff and point of view and all the stuff that this other gender can bring to the table, which we've had a surgence of in art and film scripts and directorial point of views and all this great stuff, which is great. It's that same thing. It's like if we, we only push the gas towards, you know, let's look at charismatic people who have a way of just sort of uh, looking good and doing their thing. Yeah. We're, we're just missing out and mm -hmm. almost holding back a whole different set of human beings who aren't wired that way. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'd love an island to be created where those kind of human beings are honored rather than yeah. the kind that we do now. I, just as an experiment, I'd love to see what that's like and what kind oh, of progress God, yes. we can make as a species. But yeah. that's yeah. just my two cents. I think no, a, it's... a lot about the fact that we live in a culture nowadays that um, we're, we're, we are built to take everything in all the time, where yeah. it's like we're not made to be taking in this much information on a regular basis yeah. all the time. And yeah. it means that yeah. we live on a uh, such a wide scale. We, we neglect the, the smaller communities that we were you know, kind of, sure. you know, genetically uh, more predisposed yeah, blah, 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 sure. blah, blah. <laughs> we try to recreate those online you mm. see that in fandoms and things like that oh yeah, true, yeah. It, it's and it's funny because you know the internet isn't all bad you have wonderful friends yeah. that you meet that you never would have met in a million years if we didn't have the internet so <laughs> the tough part about it is how do we not silence or not demote a certain type of human being uh, and include them in this conversation and not overwhelm them and poison their brain. How do we do that, but still yeah. keep the good elements of the internet? And that's the challenge of the 21st century. I, mean, so, yeah. I, do, I, do I didn't know if, we'd yeah. talk about this, but there you go. <laughs> I, I, I find myself wondering if that is even uh, a thing that it's possible, possible uh, to do yeah. with, with just how much, how, just how, how big the internet is because they, the, yeah. fandoms are, are wonderful places, but at the same time, the moment they yeah. get so big, you've got so many people coming in, they often can, sure. can also become toxic, toxic. places. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've, I've been in many yeah. <laughs> in, my, oh. in my times, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it, it is all about like curating your spaces as well. So I'm sure. now in, in, in yeah, yeah. smaller spaces with people that I can, you know, discuss right. things on a smaller you know person to person um scale as opposed to just sort of yelling at people right. on the internet about maybe opinions right, right. that don't or, like line up with mine <laughs> right or the way to get attention or be seen on the internet yeah. is this path of action that isn't necessarily the most positive for the species mm -hmm. in general yeah so if we had a different way of garnering attention like just imagine if culturally people who got out there and smiled on camera and did this thing with themselves and <laughs> was shamed beyond belief mm. and they yeah. never got favorites and they never got stars and they never anything. And the thing we valued most was something different. What, what would it be like? Right. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, that's kind of, kind of what I'm saying, but uh, yeah. humans yeah. are wired a certain way, or at least there's enough of them wired a certain way. Mm. Yeah. But it, it, it tips that scale. But I d remember I did. not everybody can be the wise person. The wise shaman. Yeah, but, that's true. You know, in a village, uh, you've only got one of those, and they're suffering right now. In my opinion, so. that's that's very true. I did I did uh, an experiment on my own on TikTok because I I wanted to see if it's true or not. Um, so basically, at one point, I was drawing only showing my hands, and that's yes. it. You know, and put some yes. very popular music on it, and I and I think it got like two hundred likes or something like that, and five thousand sure. views. And then I did a different one where I put on a V-neck shirt and yeah. I was full on shown and, you know, makeup and everything, hair is all yeah. blown out and whatnot. And I was drawing yeah. and you could barely see the drawing. And it got like, I think 3000 likes or something yeah. like that. And no one spoke about my drawing. And, and I might be complaining about how humans are wired, right? That the vast majority of human, you know, are just that that's what they want to see and click the button on. And that's who's on TikTok. I think TikTok itself, it's like, well, that's obviously who's going to be on TikTok, yeah. right? So it's a different medium. We need something besides a TikTok. We need mm. to take advantage of the internet in a different way. And that encourages us to see the drawing. True. I would almost take what it you ain't said, TikTok. though, in a different, <laughs> but try and spin that actually in a slightly more positive direction in that I think people are also predisposed to want to connect with the thing that they're watching. 
and it's easier to connect and like recognize yep. something when Faces. you're looking at a person. Yeah, of course. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. There's cool. many, many predispositions that we have in that way, and they've been researched out by the people who create the apps. I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, if I was in business <laughs> to hook people into never getting away from my app, I'd create ones like that too. Mm. And YouTube algorithms that show me all the stuff that, you know, uh, they do. And and that's just because that's the goal. To keep people on the app all the time. Yeah. There's this, got to be a different goal. This is why I don't have... might value. I don't know what that would be, but mm -hmm. I'm going to say it isn't just to watch that all the time. Yeah. And yeah. this is why I don't have TikTok because I know I would never get off. That's true. It would be so You're bad. Smarter. You're smarter than me. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh... I contributed to the problem. I mean, I got on TikTok. I... I'm like, I'm no saint. I got out there was like, I see what you're doing, TikTok, and I love it. You know, and a million people went nuts. So, like, I, yeah, I don't have any answers. No. I'm just yelling yes. at the glass. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Shakes my fist in cloud black on Yes. Yes. Uh, all righty. The next question is from my pal. Oh. Um, so, you've been doing comic guns a lot. Uh, and Well, just I, since they've opened, I did one. You did uh, one? Birmingham. Yeah, it was the only, because since COVID, there hasn't really been any. Well, I did GalaxyCon live. And that is a virtual Comic Con. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I didn't go in person. It was uh, two virtual panels and one on one chats. And, but that's the only live one I've done since COVID was, was Birmingham. Birmingham. Yeah. Okay, then here's, here's the very important question Is it mm -hmm. possible that you're going to be in London at one of the Comic Cons? <laughs> of course, it's possible. Because <laughs> I'm going to be there, I, just, you know. <laughs> but I, I'd have to be asked by the people who run it uh, okay, but writing to it do so. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you'd ha you basically have to pummel them as fans. I will. And say, where's Jason Spizak? Jason Spizak, I need to see him in London. I need to see him in London. You, you just you, you tell the con and you, there's this ton of people who want to see me. And then the, that pressure, plus I have someone who represents me for cons, you know, as the, my agent. But it's just for cons. Um, and then they have leverage to say, well, see, all these people want Jason and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I... I it's like anything else in acting. Uh, you have to be worth bringing, in a sense, right? And I think Silco is, and the last Comic Con I did shows that I people want to see me. So I'm hoping yep. that tips the we, we want to see you. We want to see. Yeah. You. I mean, I'm seeing you now, so it's, it's only a privilege. <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah. And hopefully, other people will too. I don't know if yeah. this is. I don't think this is an audio only podcast. So no, it's not. No, this will be on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It is now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So good. Uh, it's so good. Uh, but yes, we need to see you in London uh, because you know I can't do Birmingham just yet. So <laughs> fans. Yeah. Well, at MCM, I, I, just tweet. We want Jason. Yes. Beat them up. No, I'm kidding, guys. Don't do that. Just be polite. Polite. And. and uh... <laughs> but uh, anyway, next question uh, is from our fan or Katie. Uh, no, I, I. You know what? Go for yeah. the fan one. I think. I think that's go, a good go for the fan one? I, I've got. I've got one to do, but I think I'll do it after after the fan one. Sure. Okay. So this this one was a very interesting one. I have no idea how to say your name, so I'm sorry. It's me memory. I have no Memories idea. Memories all alone in the moonlight. That came to mind. Uh, out of all the characters you brought to life, which ones would you want to be real people and why? Which ones would I want to be real people? Well, I've played a lot of superheroes. Mm -hmm. And if I can subscribe to the logical fallacy that if there are superheroes, there are no supervillains, I'll take Kid Flash. Because oh, yes. he was amazing, and I love Wally, and I think he'd be, you know, Wally's great, great. But yeah. I think it's a logical fallacy to pretend that if there are superheroes, there are no supervillains. Mm. And generally, what you see in cartoons is not supervillainy. Because I, I mean, can you imagine if there were some real supervillains? I mean, you'd have stuff worse than the boys. You, you'd really have some awful, <laughs> awful crap going on. I don't know how so you can get that much I'm, I'm loath to take that off the table, just morally speaking, because I, you know, if I wish for there to be Kid Flash in real life, then there'd have to be a Joker. And I think we mm. would all really be shocked at how yeah. that would play out in real life. So I'm going to... Um... Say Silco. Oh boy. Say Silco. <laughs> <laughs> 
a murderous crime lord. Mm. We got those already, so he's just so cool. Hey. He's, he's nice. I want a murderous crime lord who knows how to dress, damn it. That's, that's the right. That's right. That's complete No, say whatever you want, but, you know, see what's cool. Uh, yes. <laughs> Yeah. All right. All right. I'll go with uh, the one I have here. Um, this is a bit of a uh, strange one, but I do like to ask it, people this. Um, and I'm w wondering if you have a favorite piece of what I would refer to as mediocre media, which are the things that I think are like, when you watch them, you are aware at the time that maybe it's not the best made thing, but it is so like mm, pure. Yeah. All in, news in, in America is terrible. <laughs> No, yeah, it's like they, they, I, because I, I have a deep love for um indie movies, like really low budget indie movies that maybe sure. aren't the most um, like polished pieces, but they're because mm -hmm. they're put together so earnestly that like, people who made them are um making something well, very true to. And it them. depends on what your definition of, is of that, because if it's not a commercial success, and if that's your definition, or if it looks like it's just not that well executed, but it's, you want to watch anyway. It's more like, um, it's it, I like really quiet sort of indie films that maybe aren't like the most technically put together. Like, sure. I'm trying to think of how to word this properly. Yeah, but I, um, I, I do like that. I, yeah. I do like a film that has been not heard of and done well enough that you get the point. And I think it's imaginative and different because, you know, Hollywood is just there to make money, which means it's it's going to give you the same things kind of over and over. It's just yeah. how the business is. Um, but I, uh, mediocre media. Mm. Uh, I always liked MST3K, Mystery Science yeah. Theater 3000. Oh, uh, okay. That's yeah. the one. That's, you're not going to call that height of art. <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> mediocre media. Mm. But you cannot watch MST3K and not laugh. It's so the way they send up those old movies and stuff. You just, yeah. So everybody on this call watch Mystery Science Theater 3000. Mm, it's one of those ones. I, I, I heard uh, a lot of really good things about. Um. Oh, <laughs> you, you will not. I mean, it doesn't matter which episode you turn on. Just enjoy. Mm, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. It's yeah. really fair. I think it fits the definition, what you were sharing. I think that's fair, yeah. I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> Uh, we have another fan question from Nadia, who's asking, how did you learn piano, to play the piano, I'm guessing? Uh, I just was self-taught. Um, I, wow. I never had piano lessons. I had trumpet lessons when I was younger um, for a couple of years, you know, uh, but I never learned to read music. Um, wow. I just found any piano I could little keyboards mm. in the store and my grandfather had a little Casio keyboard I had um, just anytime I could find a piano I just banged away on it and wow. uh, eventually just got better and better and better I have a good yeah. ear for music um, I composed incidental music for the Arizona Shakespeare Festival uh, for two years in a row I was the court composer Wow! Um, wow, that's I awesome. I composed, I composed a fair bit of music, but I never really turned it into a career. It didn't go past that because I'm competing against, you know, humans that can sight read music and stand up there and make a change on the bassoons thing and then walk back up and conduct. And I, you know, not, I mean, not that Danny Elfman did that at first. You know, he was, you know, from a different scene. Yeah. But yeah, it just wasn't the path my life took. I'd love to do the soundtrack to one of my own movies at some point, but uh, that sounds um, yeah. just just self-taught, decent ear. So you play by thing. ear then, like you know, if you can, yeah. if you hear something, yeah, yeah, you can yeah. play it. Yeah, I'm basically. not an incredible mimic, meaning I can't hear something and then give it right back to you two seconds yeah, yeah, yeah. later. Otherwise, I would have been on America's Got Talent. But I, I okay. I'm not. <laughs> I, I just like to extemporize and uh, have fun, compose. Oh, that's awesome. I'll have to put some of my music out there. Yeah, it's one of those it. skills that I um I always wish I could. It's it my my brain's not wired in that kind of way, right? It, it yeah. like it, it, it if I can play a little bit of guitar, but it has taken, it, I, I I it would be something I'd have to work incredibly, like solidly at and and sit, have yes. kind of a singular focus at in order to be like actually get to a level that I would be happy with. But and I don't have yeah. that kind of um 
focus for it, but it's it, it's I have to awesome. shut off half my brain for it to work. Like like I do feel it shut down. I do feel there's a certain I go someplace else kind of thing actually when that happens. So. Who knows? That's Every fair. brain is different. Yeah. Yeah, that's very fair. Mm. Um keep playing guitar. Are... Never give it up. <laughs> That's very true. It's, it's sitting just in the corner the of my room. room. Yeah, no, I do. It's, it's, it's self, my, my, yeah. my trouble comes from the fact that I, I will pick it up, play it very solidly for like maybe a couple of weeks, and then I will yeah. um, uh, get distracted by something else. And then um, yeah. my nails, I, I tend to grow my nails out so much, I actually sure. physically can't play. Right, right, it bumps into the strings, yeah. Yeah, yeah and I have to, so I have to yeah. go be like, oh, if I'm going to play, I have to cut my nails down. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Very intentional um, so thing. But I, gonna work like these, are, these are difficult life choices you're facing. I know. And yeah. I want you to know that so I support difficult. you. Thank you. Uh, I support you, Katie. <laughs> Thank you. And we're here for you. They're with you. They're with the you. whole <laughs> fandom and the internet at large. Oh, I appreciate it. That's, yeah. that's a lot of support. Oh, my God. <laughs> of course. You and if, if we are talking about music, I have to ask, uh, there are some amazing songs in Arcane. What was your favorite yes. one? My favorite song. Oh boy. I loved Imagine Dragons. Like, but I've heard mm. it so mm. much that I'm like, ooh, do I still think that's my favorite? Because that was. I love Sting's song yes. at the end. You know, I, just I think that kind of has become my favorite mm -hmm. of the show. It's such a meaningful moment. It's so powerful. I can't not listen to it and experience that thing. So mm -hmm. I would say, in the, and the theme, the Magna, you know, Magna Dragons, of course, the theme of the show, That's close right. second. Yeah. yeah From yeah, Arcane. Yeah. yeah. That uh, is one of the rare ones that I, every time it came on, I was like, no, I'm not going to skip this. <laughs> this is good. No, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> not only like, is the song good. The once. Yeah, not only is the song good, but the actual, like, um, yeah. opening credits sequence is, is so, obviously, like everything else in the show, is so beautifully um, yeah. realized. Uh, yeah, it's just like, oh, I found myself so watching nice. the opium credits more than other shows. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. that's very that. true. <laughs> that's very true. And uh, you know what was amazing is uh, I think it was the Game Awards uh, where Sting performed uh, that's Most Good right. at Being Live, I, and you know it's yeah. just it, it it just blew my mind away. He was just standing there. <laughs> And yeah. barely, because when uh, I started music, I, it was always like, you have to open your mouth, you have to articulate and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I was like, no. okay. And Sting is just standing there and just, and it's, it's beautiful. It's every notice. That's why he's Sting though. Yeah. Okay. Yes, he is. That's yeah. why that, he, that's is why he is Sting. a multi-platinum bajillion, <laughs> you know, songs that are so incredibly famous that you could just sing them off the top of your head. His voice is incredible. And that's why he is who he is. So, I, I did. And have Christian to... had a great like story for me because Christian wrote uh, the song, and uh, oh, wow. I believe, and the violin part as well. I don't remember if he's written the whole thing or just the violin solo. But anyway, because he got to direct Sting. Because mm. <laughs> Christian and Alex are the creators of the show, and they're in there. They're they're co-directing the whole show. And mm. when it came time for the music part, Christian is a musician first and foremost. He's a musician in Germany. Uh, on the you know the rock scene and stuff uh, before mm -hmm. he came to mm -hmm. LA, and like he's like I was like what is that like? And he goes at first you're like sweating really hard because they're <laughs> sting and you're like what do I say to this guy? And do I you know do I tell him I didn't like what he did? Do I whatever? Mm -hmm. And he said that like after five minutes it was just musician to musician, mm. and it was beautiful because Sting is you know an incredible musician and you know wants the same thing, wants it to be incredible. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it a fascinating story. It is, it is. And I was jealous as crap because I've always <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm all about, <laughs> ever uh, since I, I was you know, synchronicity. Jealous. You know, like I, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> tell me, tell me more about Sting, Christian. <laughs> you know, so yeah. I, uh, yeah. I I went, I did choir a lot um, when I was a younger, and I I heard that um, thing about like you have to make sure you get you really get your mouth around the words. You got to over enunciate. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you start I, sounding I'm American. Sting wasn't in choir. Just, nah, I don't know, maybe, no, maybe not. No, I mean, I did, um, when, when I was very young, it was church choir. And then in, you yeah. know, secondary school, it was just sort of like, we did a lot of, um, I think we did One Day More, more than like any other song during my one time in jail. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good song, though. Yeah, I mean, um, it was great. That and it's... we did a bit of Bring Him Home, like in my later years, which always sounded amazing. Yeah. Which, and I, I absolutely Bring loved doing that. Yeah. yeah. So that and just That's a lot fun. of like, because we did a carol service every year. 
um, uh, in church. So I, I just, I sang a lot of Christmas carols and like hymns and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a good thing to do. Mm. Uh, the last fam question is from last. Oh. Last oh yes, time, it, oh, I guess we, that is the time has flown. Mm. Isn't it? Okay. It, it did. It's because it was a, it, it was a good, you know, conversation. But we're going to keep going a little bit. <laughs> uh, okay. It's it's from Liz the Freeze, and uh, the hey, question Liz. is, uh, who or what inspires you as an actor? Who or what inspires me? Um, when I was younger, I had many actors that I looked up to. You know, who had gone before me in this. Uh, on this path, you know, like Laurence Olivier and Robin mm. Williams. And, you know, so my comedy was inspired a lot by Robin and my, you know, acting, you know, Laurence Olivier did a lot of Shakespeare that I loved. And then Gary Oldman was my favorite actor for the longest time, you know, when yep. I was um, like, as of right now, it's not a person. It's not, mm -hmm. I'm not inspired by another actor so much as I am inspired by the authenticity and the, the joy and what can be brought to the human experience by telling good stories. Mm. That's what really motivates me. When I step up to the mic after 26 years, I love the idea that the audience is going to experience something that they've never experienced before. That I want to create a voice that's, a, that's unique, that's, mm. that pulls you into where this character is coming from like a magnet and you just won't be let go. You don't hear me, that you don't hear, you know, it's, it's telling the story from a completely authentic point of view. I, yeah. I just think there's so much mileage to be gotten out of that. Mm. Uh, and I love doing it. In video games as well, you know, I mean, when you're playing a six, seven foot tall lizard creature and you're doing the motion <laughs> capture for Ukon in Gears of War, and you're like, feed those arrogant little gears their own entrails. You're, you're all good. creating, you know, a guy with lizard teeth. Mm. You, it's the it's ultimate joy as an actor to be able to paint that complete picture, you know, with your voice and in that case my voice and body, um, so that when it's on screen, that they just get the story, that they they just experience what's being told. Uh, that that's what motivates me. Oh, that's. Awesome. I like it. Um, and to be in anything that Riot produces for the rest of my life. <laughs> I mean, they take such time with the actors and creativity, and it's yeah. it's wonderful to be a part of. Yeah. Oh, I bet. I bet. Um, this is my question now. Uh, which one is the a final better role? Question. The final what was that? question. Uh, um, which role is better? I, I have my favorite roles to play, but I want to know yours: uh, the villain or the hero? Yeah. Villain. I mean, yeah. I, with the exception, I think I would love to play Batman someday. I would love yes. to play Batman someday. And I, <laughs> but to me, he's kind of the anti-hero, mm. you know, so it walks that same line. But the villain is much more fun to play, mm -hmm. especially when many people see Soko as a good father, right? And there's this whole debate around this murderous guy who's just, really gone off the rails as far as most society <laughs> you know, norms are concerned. True. But is changed by the act of being a father, the simple fact of having a daughter starts it to work its magic on this person who had nothing else to live for but the goal of Zon his whole hmm. life. And you, that, when you get that, you know, give me a hero that makes that journey. Mm. That's rare. Yep. That's really but, rare very for rare. a hero to yeah. make that level of journey. I think, Which, yeah. To me is why I like playing the bad guys. Yeah, Razor's similar. Best. Razor in Green Lantern, the animated series, because mm -hmm. he's, kind, he's a bad guy. He's on the wrong team at the start, and you see him make this journey. So there was just an episode of Young Justice out this last week called On the Razor's Edge, season four of Young Justice on HBO Max, and... They brought Razor from Green Lantern, the animated series, into Young Justice, and it was really, oh, really nice. cool. And uh, so Razor got to be alive, you know, back on screen again after a decade almost. Oh, um, very fun. Yeah. And if you haven't seen Green Lantern, the animated series, oh, yeah. it's so good. It is good. It's really <laughs> cool. Like Razor and Aya's story is just like because they weren't in the comics. So mm. anytime the writers don't have to portray 
like Hal Jordan, because mm-hmm. Hal Jordan is in the comics mm-hmm. and Kilowog is in the comics or Batman's in the comics. Anytime they get a fresh face, there's yeah. such brilliant writing talent out there. Such yeah. brilliant writing talent. I mean, you saw it in Arcane. Yep. That when you get these characters like Silco, who isn't in League, they can have this carte blanche to just open their coats and out come these beautiful, you know, birds. Yep. Their writing is just like incredibly brilliant. So yeah, yeah. that's how Harley Quinn was born. Yeah. It so was. you know, there, there are so many great examples for that. Yeah. So I like, I, I like that. Mm. I would play yeah. someone original. So if someone asked me, you know, who's your favorite superhero or villain or whatever to play, I'd be like something that someone hasn't written yet. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's fair. So write it, people. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's go for it. It's good. Uh, right. Katie, any more questions? Uh, uh, no, I think I think that's a I think that's a good place to to kind of I think a good note to leave it on. To be honest, <laughs> that's thank you. Very fair. Yeah. Um, this has been a blast. You guys are great. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> you're great. <laughs> you're, you're great. Stop oh it. no, you're great. Oh, no, you're great. I love you. You're the bestest. <laughs> oh. yeah. No, Truly, thank you for coming yes. and hanging out with us for for a bit. It's been it's, really, it's yeah. been really lovely. To... Yeah, it's my pleasure. It, you know, it's so nice uh, to to have this chat and and you know talk about all the things that we love basically because that's why we do this. Um, and we have well, I have a last request from you. <laughs> uh, would Never. you say goodbye <laughs> to our? friends and fans sure. uh, on your on your circle voice maybe and then sure, that's sure, going to yeah. be our close line. Sure. thank you for listening to this last bit of programming and until next time this is Silco don't cry you're perfect oh, so beautiful so good bye everybody <laughs> 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 <laughs>